Welcome to this three-part series that will step through Two Flows Tutorial Module 1. Before we begin, uh, if you're going to be working through this whilst doing the manual activities yourselves, I recommend you download the Tutorial Model datasets and also the latest Two Flow Executable. I'll show you where those can be located. If you go to the Two Flow website, which is www.twoflow.com, go to Downloads, it should automatically go to latest releases and second from the top is the latest release download, download that. And then also go down to tutorial and demo models uh, and in the variety of options here, the top row is for tutorial modules. Choose the platform that matches uh, your working environment. We'll be using QGIS for this session, uh, but you could select the others if you wish. Let's see, you'll also require some other supporting software. The first is a GIS package for working with your spatial data sets. Twoflow is compatible with MapInfo, QGIS or ArcGIS. This demonstration will be using QGIS. You'll also require a text editor and we recommend either Notepad++ or UltraEdit and you'll also require Microsoft Excel. If you've not previously used QGIS or Notepad++, I highly recommend that you first uh, look over our webinars that show you how to install and configure and also use both of those packages. I'll quickly show you where that can be located too. If you scroll to the top of the website on the far right, you'll see a link to the wiki. Click on the Tuflo Classic HPC wiki. We'll be building a Tuflo Classic model. On the far left of the wiki homepage down the bottom, there is an item titled Webinar Recordings. Uh, in section 3 there's supporting software and here you'll find two items. There's one for Notepad++ and also another one for QGIS. Uh, if you're not familiar with either of those packages, please look over those webinars first before trying to build your, your first two-flow model. Uh, there's nine different elements to this video series and we've split those up into lots of three, so we've in essence got three videos. This first video will focus on setting up the model project on your computer. It'll show you how to define the model domain and also the model roughness uh, and topography. Video two will add boundary conditions to the model. It will set the model controls and will also run the simulation and video three We'll look at some of the check files that that model simulation produced. We'll review some of the results and also talk about the model performance. Let's start with tutorial module one. The first step was to set up the model project on your computer. There's three items that we need to cover here and that is uh, defining the model folder structure, specifying the projection for your entire project. Tuflo will always have to work on a single projection per project and also creating the template files for your project. It's important this is done at the start of every project so that the right projection is associated with those files. You shouldn't be copying and pasting template files from, different pro from one project to another. Fortunately, the QGIS Twoflow plugin has a series of, of buttons and tools to fully automate this process, uh, which was previously a manual process. Let's work through that now in QGIS. This is the main QGIS window. If you haven't already installed the Twoflow plugin, I recommend you do so. I actually recommend you go back and watch the QGIS configuration webinar I mentioned previously. All right, go up to plugins, Twoflow, go down to editing, configure and create Twoflow project. Uh, here we'll set, first set the projection. For the tutorial model, it must be WGS84 UTM zone 60S. That one there. Click OK. We'll set the location of our modeling. I'll be working on the C drive in a folder called Twoflow and tutorials. Set the executable location. You can place this wherever you wish. 
I've placed mine also on the C drive, two flow uh, releases, and the version I'll be using is 2018 03AE. And I'm selecting the single precision version, so it has ISP in the name. Next, select the engine you wish to use. We'll be using Two Flow Classic, which is the top one, and select all the remaining checkboxes. That'll save this configuration as the default for the next time we open QGIS. It'll create the folder structure that 95% of Two Flow models use. It'll write our template files and also um, include the necessary commands to call the tutorial model, which won't require a paid license to use. Click OK. A DOS window should open, and that's TwoFlow running, creating all of our template files. Click OK, and the pop-up displays. What has that done? That has created our TwoFlow folder structure. You'll see there's a new folder in the tutorials folder now called TwoFlow. I should actually say this uh, in this tutorials folder, I've also copied the online tutorial data sets in here which is the module data and the complete model folder. We'll be pulling information from them shortly. Uh, so we're going to the TwoFlow folder. This is the one that the uh, QGIS plugin just created. We have the BC database folder. That's where our boundary condition database information will reside. A check folder. Our check files will be written there. Model. This will be our the location of our GIS data sets go into that there's a GIS folder um, projections already written and there's also an empty folder this is where all of our template GIS files already reside Toothflow wrote those for us results as the name suggests that's where our results will be written and then runs runs is the folder where our Toothflow control files will be written uh, mentioning Toothflow control files is actually a good segue into discussing the I guess, various control files that we'll come across in this tutorial. Uh, and here they are here. Uh, there'll be four of them. Uh, there's the TwoFlow control file, which is the one in the runs folder. That includes all of our simulation commands and references to the other control files. If we're running a model, we'll always run that from the TwoFlow control file. We'll have the geometry control file, in this file, we'll have all of our um, mesh information, so the cell size, the origin, the orientation, as well as the uh, topography information. We have a boundary control file that will contain the location of our boundary conditions, and we'll have a materials file. It's important to notice the extension of all these files relates to the file's use. You'll see the TUFO control file has an extension of TCF, geometry control file, TGC etc etc so it makes it very easy to identify what file is used for what purpose uh, once you're familiar with what those purposes are uh, so something to note is that these files include the these text files include references to the GIS data sets which are um, all of the spatial inputs to our model let's start with our model build now and we'll do that by defining the model domain the model orientation, active area, topography, and also moving on from that land use. Uh, because all of this stuff is related to the geometry, we'll be working in the geometry control file, which is the one on the left here. To start with, we'll go to the module data set and open up some of the inputs that have been provided to work with, for us to work with. Uh, let's see, so it's under module data. There's two folders we'll work with in this one tutorial, and that is information coming from the DEMs folder, the text, that's the DEM data set, and then also information from module one. Uh, go to module one first, go to GIS, let's see, bring in the two shape files, that's underscore mat and also boundary region shape. Uh, we'll actually bring these across into drag and drop them into QGIS. We'll set the coordinate reference system based on one of these, so everything is 
always using the same coordinate reference system, there's no mistakes. Uh, to do that, just right click one of them, click set project to CRS front layer. Uh, after doing that, we'll also bring across the DEM that was back under module data, DEMs uh, text. And it's just an ASC file. Drag that in and it should display. I'll set the symbology of this to hillshade. And I'll drag it behind the other data sets. Okay, this will be our model. Uh, let me turn off those two. Uh, we'll have water flowing from the bottom left, which is the upstream area, downstream to the top of the screen. Our model will have this extent. That will be the active portion of our domain. And within that model, there's a variety of different land uses. There's roads, there's denser vegetation down through the creek uh, and pasture across the remaining areas. Now, as it stands, uh, none of this is actually contained in the TwoFlow project folder. Uh, because of that, uh, we need to do some manipulation to get things into that consistent folder structure. To start with, let's copy across the um, grid data set, so the DEM, and place it in the TwoFlow project. I'll simply right click DEM underscore M01.ASC, click copy, go to our TwoFlow folder, model. We'll create a folder here which is uh, called grid. just paste it in. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is we, we try and keep everything relative to this, well, internally within this TwoFlow folder. I don't want to be referencing files outside of that because the project won't be transportable then if I wish to share it with others. Uh, okay, the DM has come across. Um, now we can start working with this data. Let's start by creating a geometry control file which is a text file which we'll use to reference the different pieces of information. Go down to right click uh, and go down to new text document. We'll call this m01 underscore 5m underscore 002.tgc. TGC standing for two flow geometry control file. We can now open this in notepad plus plus and we can start entering in some commands uh, to define our geometry. Uh, the first thing we want to do is define the origin and also the orientation. There's about three or four different ways you can do this. Uh, we'll hard code in some specific x, y values, coordinate values, uh, so that it ties to the demo license of TwoFlow, which doesn't require a paid license. Uh, if you're doing this on your own project, you might use what's called a 2D location line. So look that up in the manual if you're not familiar with it. That will allow you to, rather than specify fixed values such as this, uh, it would allow you just to simply draw a line and the start of the line would be the origin and the orientation of that line would then define the orientation. Whereas in this way, the start of the line is this coordinate, x and y, and the second coordinate specifies the end of the line. So it in turn tells too far what the orientation is. Uh, okay, so We've now defined, I guess, the x-axis of our domain, which if I was to draw it, um, would go across like this. The next thing we want to do is specify a cell size. The DM that we're using here, I think, has a half meter resolution. Uh, you don't have to resample that at different resolutions to match your model. Uh, we'll read in that half resolution DM and TwoFlow will actually sample that at a five meter resolution for us. That's one thing that's really nice about TwoFlow is that all of our commands are cell size independent. The next thing we want to do is define our domain extents. And we'll do that using the grid size XY command. This model will be 850 meters in the X direction and 1000 meters in the Y direction. Uh, not all of that area is going to get wet. So it's 
actually more efficient to refine that extent than to just leave it as a big rectangle. Okay. Because of that, we'll now specify some code commands. Code is the terminology that's used in TwoFlow to define if a cell will be active or not. So active being you'll be allowed to get wet and inactive, meaning that it won't be able to get wet. Uh, a code value of zero will actually mean that the cells won't be active. And by specifying this command, I'm turning off all the cells in the entire domain. What I'll do though, is I'll overwrite that command by using a set, oh sorry, using a read GIS code command, which will reference a shape file to activate the specific portion of that rectangular domain that I'd like to use in my model. Let's do that now. Uh, I'll just save the geometry control file, I'll shift it off to the side, and now we'll start specifying or defining where our active model will be. Click on the blue box with the down arrow in it. That will imp um, that will bring in an empty file for us. And we'll be selecting the 2D underscore code layer, which is this one here. We'll give it a run ID of M01 underscore 002, uh, and we'll import a region type. And we're actually gonna copy across this purple region into this file format, which is using the right format that Tuflo requires. If you're ever not sure what template files do, or what the various empty template files do, I recommend reading these tool tips in the import um, tool, and it'll tell you what it does. It'll also link you to a section of the wiki with further information. Okay, having done that, click OK. That's now brought in a file which uses the correct format for Tuflo. Now what we want to do is we want to copy across this purple region from the boundary region file into the 2D code region file. Okay, to do that, click editing on the 2D code. Uh, let's see, sorry, select boundary region, so it's the active data set in the layer panel. Click the select features button. It should highlight as orange when you do that. Click edit, copy features. Click on the 2D code layer, so it becomes the active data set. Make sure it's editable. You can see the little pencil icon next to the name. And then click Paste Features. Now, if I turn off uh, the boundary regions, or actually if I remove boundary regions, I've just right clicked it there and I'll go down to Remove Layer. Uh, you'll see now that that information has come across into the 2D code data set. If I click on the attribute for that, oops, the attribute has been set to a value of null. We want to set that to a value of one. One will mean active. Check that's come across properly. There, so it's a value of one now. We'll do the same with the 2D material layer as well. We'll simply copy across the information from this data set to another. Before we do that, however, let's go back to that control file and update this file reference. Uh, the command is read GIS code equals equals. Tufo uses relative referencing. What that means is if I type GIS backslash, I'm actually just going to uh, copy this name. If I click rename and then just uh, control C on my keyboard, I can bring that across without making any spelling mistakes. <laughs> uh, relative referencing means th that this file is in a, in a location relative to it. Okay, if we save the GIS file, the TGC file, we go to Windows Explorer, 
So it's in the TGC file. Drag it up there. It's then this shape file is in the GIS folder. So that's why I've got the GIS backslash and then the file name there. Uh, and there it is there. The Tufo tool brought it automatically into the right position for us, or the right location. A very useful way to check if your referencing is correct in these control files is to, in, in Notepad++, is to right click the file and go open file. And if something opens, then the file exists and the path is right. If, for example, I got the path wrong, let's remove the GIS backslash and try to open in Notepad++. It doesn't find it, therefore, it shows there's a problem with the path. But in this instance, it exists. Now there's another important lesson to learn from these two commands, and that is data layering. In TwoFlow, um, files that are referenced lower in the control file will take precedence wherever the information overlaps. What that means in this instance is we've set a global command over the entire domain, and then we've overwritten it for this specific portion. Um, and wherever this polygon resides, the code value will be established as a value of 1 instead of 0. We'll do the same thing with our geometry. Uh, okay, we've est established where our domain is. Let's now set our elevations. Uh, and the terminology here is Z points in TwoFlow to set the elevations. We'll set a, a global value of, let's say, 75. I'm using this value because it's higher than any of the other elevation values in the DM. And when I look at my check files at a later date, I'll be able to search for this specific value. And if I find it, it'll tell me if there's a, a hole in my DM, DM that needs to be resolved. So I've set a global value of that. Uh, I'll then overwrite that value with my DM data set. And once again, this, is, this DM is, has a much finer resolution than the model resolution that we'll be using. And that's perfectly, oh, it's actually recommended. Okay, we've now established our domain, extents, uh, resolution, the active areas, our elevation data set. Uh, the final thing we need to do in the geometry control file is specify the land use. And we do that using the 2D mat file. Let's create an empty and just copy across the data first. So we'll create an empty 2D mat region. Uh, let's see. I'll actually have the same name. This one's of the, of the correct format, so we can even just copy this across. Let's do that. We can copy that across from module data, module 1, GIS. That's into the TwoFlow folder, model, GIS. Uh, so you can copy that straight across and you'll find it's in the right format. Let's just drag it, drag it in and um, actually I'll remove the old one. Let's look at this data set. If we open the attribute table, you'll see it. there's an integer with a series of numbers. Each of those numbers relates to a different Manning Zen value. And we'll translate this integer to that Manning Zen using another control file. But for the sake of how it's spatially presented, each material is just a single integer value. What we will do, however, before we read in this spatial data set is we'll, in the same way we defined a global code value and a global elevation value, we'll define a global material value of 1. Uh, and I'll tell you what that translates to in, many, in terms of many sense later on. We'll then overwrite that with the command read GIS mat equals equals GIS backslash and it's this name here. Once again, I always just click rename, control C, and then I don't actually rename it. And I copy that information across to Notepad++. So we're setting the 
land use type to one and then we're overriding it with these series of polygons and wherever they overlap they'll take precedence. What that means is that the areas where there are no polygons uh, we do have a material value specified uh, which in this instance will represent grass. That's it. That's our geometry control file complete. Uh, save that. You'll notice that the icon at the top left here is red. That means this file isn't saved yet. If TwoFlow was to read this file, uh, it wouldn't know any of the edits since the last update or the last save. So you have to make sure all the save saves are up to date. Click save. Uh, finally, before concluding video one, let's update the TwoFlow control file to reference this geometry control file. Remember the TwoFlow control file is the one that we use to run our simulation and it's the one that includes references to all the other control files, our simulation commands like your time step and your start and end time and as well as your output controls. Open Windows Explorer, go to the runs folder and find the createempties.tcf file. Open that in Notepad++ and we'll modify it to reference our newly created geometry control file uh, and also we'll provide a reference to our materials control file um, which relates back to those integer values that I spoke about previously. The first thing we would like or we should be doing is commenting out the right empty GIS files. You only need to do that once the very first time you establish a project. Every uh, time thereafter you run a model you don't want to do this. To do that simply add an exclamation mark before the command. You'll see now the command has gone green um, that is now, uh, TUFO will now ig ignore that whole line of uh, syntax. We'll save this TUFO control file. It's just a, so we don't accidentally save over the one that already exists there. We'll call it m01 underscore 5m underscore 002.tcf. Uh, and now we'll provide reference to the geometry control file that we just created. The command is geometry control file equals equals and a reference to that. You'll see here I've specified dot dot model m01 etc etc tgc. Uh, in relative referencing terms the dot dot backslash uh, translates to stepping back one folder. So if we're in the runs folder we go back to the two flow folder and then into the model folder, that's where the TGC file is and that's why that dot dot backslash is there. The other file I'd like us to bring across is the materials file. Go into Windows Explorer, go into the module dataset, uh, module one and Excel, sorry not Excel, it'll be text, uh, you could bring across either of these, but um, just bring across the CSV file. It seems more people are using CSV these days than TMF. So copy the CSV file, bring it across to uh, your model directory. So to flow model, copy it there. It should be in the same folder as the TGC file now. Let's have a look at this file before we add syntax to the Tuflow control file referencing it. Just double click it, it should open in Excel. And you'll see here that we have an integer value. You'll recall that those integers were specified in the GIS shape files. And we have a Manning's end value relating to that integer value. So this is where you specify your Manning's ends. Uh, let's now reference this file in the TwoFlow control file. The command is read material file or materials file and then it's simply the file reference. I'll just right click that and test that it's the path is right. It opens up so therefore the path is correct. Uh, I'll save this file and we'll, con we'll stop there. Uh, moving on in video two, uh, we'll add our boundary conditions to the model. We'll then run the model uh, and then in video three, we'll look at the results. See you soon.